fly away Hello friends, welcome back. I'm in my orange sweater because I found my bin of lost sweaters. If you saw my last video where I was decluttering my closet, I like couldn't find my favorite sweaters, this orange one <laughs> being one of them. Well, I went back into the attic and discovered I had a whole like plastic bin of sweaters and I forgot about all these other sweaters that I had. They're like, it was like the bin of my most worn sweaters essentially is what that was. So I found it, but I put an Instagram poll up to see what you guys wanted me to wear today, either this orange sweater or this other brown <laughs> sweater. And it was very close. And I even checked this morning before I left the house, but orange sweater was winning the whole time, but it was very, the results are very, very close. I think I'm gonna wear my other sweater either tonight or tomorrow. So I did pack it for this weekend autumnal weekend reading vlog. I think that's what we're going for. I am at my parents for the weekend. I needed to come up for a doctor's appointment. So guys, I finally went to the doctor. I got my annual, I got my annual checkup finally. So I, everything was good. Um, I would say it was not a very pleasant experience. So I think I'm gonna just try and focus on self care and like doing fun activities today. Yeah, that, that's gonna be the plan. Work's been like really busy and I've just been in a weird, I don't, it's not a funk. I just been in this like weird pattern of like my personal life with like my job and like commuting and I've been struggling with waking up in the morning and staying up late. A lot of just same things that I <laughs> struggle with a lot. I was really counting, counting down the days until we move, which T minus I don't even know, T minus five weeks, six weeks, five and a half weeks. So we're almost to a month. I am proud of myself for at least starting the packing decluttering process, but I just cannot get into our new place sooner because my commute time is gonna go down from like 50 minutes to 20 minutes. And I really can't believe I've been doing a 50 minute commute, like 50, 50 minutes one way. So basically two hours a day I'm in the car to get to work and I know some people can do commuting I am not I'm not one of those people like not only do I feel like my time is being sucked but like my energy I feel like just the issues I've been dealing with have all been just related and stem from having a long commute I think self-care is really in order today and just this weekend as well since I'm visiting my parents I'm staying the night and then I'm going back tomorrow like afternoon so then I'll have Saturday night and like Sunday to kind of relax at home. My parents' house has like changed a lot since I have been here. They got new flooring. There was this large piece of furniture that was blocking this entire window. So there was like no sunlight in this house. So there's like so much sunlight in here and it's like shocking. I grew up my whole life not having this window exposed. Let's talk about reading because this is a reading vlog or so I'm calling it a reading vlog. Reading self-care weekend vlog, but I want to try and finish The Family Upstairs by Lisa Jewell this weekend. That was my goal to finish this week and I haven't been making that much progress. I've been very, I've been slacking on reading and I think I need to read two more books to reach my September goal. I'm still reading Shadow of Night. I knew that was going to be kind of a a long-winded reading session. I'm still enjoying it. I just need to have like long periods of time to like get into the story and like not be interrupted, which I feel like I've been, inter I've <laughs> this week has been like just full of interruptions or I just haven't been there like mentally or I've been up late or watching TV, blah, blah, blah. But I think I really wanna focus on finishing this book this weekend. I think we can do it. And lunch is Panera bread. I like never, get Panera Bread anymore. Like I used to get it when I didn't go gluten-free and dairy-free and then I like rediscovered it thanks to Alicia and Emily when we went on a, a trip back from a wine festival and we stopped at Panera. So I've been obsessed with the Fuji apple salad, but I do, it like normally comes with chicken on it, but I don't get the chicken. I'll ask for tuna, like tuna salad, and then I don't get cheese on it. What does it for me is the apples and then there's walnuts in here, like candied walnuts, and it's just really good. And I feel like I could easily make this at home, which I should, but you know, salads just taste better when you get them out. So this is a good like fall recipe idea. If you just do like a salad, but like add, 
like apple chunks or apple crisps and like candied walnuts and then whatever like protein other toppings you want on it super yummy and then there's balsamic vinaigrette dressing so my afternoon plan is going to be eat check some work emails and then i'm just gonna go i'm gonna go to the bookstore because i just need to have a self-care moment and that involves going to the bookstore i might take my work laptop and like do work emails and like get a nice drink at the like cafe there because that just sounds nice and a good way to relax because like all this morning I drove three hours to get to the doctor's office. I was waiting in the doctor's office longer than I should have. Didn't have a very pleasant exam situation and yeah so I think book shopping. <laughs> So cafe slash book trip was another unpleasant experience. Today is just the day of like unpleasantries. I don't know what's happening. We are in Mercury retrograde. I got a chai latte and that was fine and dandy. But when I was walking into like the bookshop, there was this young man, <laughs> this dude who was like walking in front of me and then like looked back at me and then he like waved at me. Like basically I had a creeper stalker this entire book store trip um so immediately i felt uncomfortable and then i was like maybe i just won't go in and i will leave and go <laughs> just go somewhere else but i had my laptop and in situations like that i try to just persevere like obviously i will follow my gut and if i really do not feel safe i will leave the situation but at that point i was like i'm not gonna let this person disrupt my day of trying to have fun and do fun things so I went in there was no free Wi-Fi I guess the place it's books a million or BAM you can only get free Wi-Fi if you're like a member or like join their membership program so I had no <laughs> and no Wi-Fi so I had to just reply to emails on my phone and then just had my computer up to look like I was doing something I was able to sit and just relax for a little bit and then Mr. Creepo came over with like a book and sat like at the table like directly behind me and then I was like yep I'm getting up and getting away from the situation so then I immediately got up and then walked around and then I was like I could leave but then I was like, no, I'm not letting this person again ruin my trip. So I was able to walk around, you know, look at books and things like that. But the whole time I was just like looking to see if he was going to be there when I turned around the corner. And this is like, why do we have, I say we, like we as women and like femmes, why, just why patriarchy? Oh my gosh. So I left and I'm at a grocery store because I need to go get some money out um, from the bank and I'm 
kind of procrastinating to go in because my mom is in the grocery store right now. She called me and was like, I'm running to the store. Do you want anything? Yesterday was my mom's 60th birthday, so I've come home to go to the doctor, but also see her. I guess when I go home, I'm just gonna relax, maybe watch some YouTube, <laughs> go on Instagram. I have a reel I need to post. And then we're going out to dinner. My parents and I are going out um, for my mom's birthday. And then that'll kind of be the rest of my Friday. Who knows what else is gonna happen. Cheers. <laughs> We have an outfit change because we're going out to dinner. That's the only update I have. Peace. Yesterday there was sun and there was rain. Beauty in the mundane. And as the light startled our we let go of disguise oh, 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 oh. And now There's something in the air And a sparkly shimmer on our skin Restoring everything within oh, 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 oh. Dreamy, breezy We are about to head out to a fall festival. I'm so excited. Fall things. I wanted to do a reading check-in because we're making progress. I'm on page like 200 so I have like 136 pages to go and I realize I haven't really talked about this book but if you don't know Lisa Jewell writes a lot of suspense. I don't I wouldn't call it like a thriller because it literally is like suspense. There's not like action but there's a lot of like mystery and you really want to find out what happens next. So our main character is called Libby and she receives a letter in the mail one day that reveals the identity of her birth parents. So she was an orphan essentially. Her birth parents died when she was I think 10 months old and she was found you know after this death occurred and she also comes to realize that she is the inheritor, the sole inheritor of a multi-million dollar abandoned mansion on the Thames River in London. So we have a very English London backdrop and a mystery around this abandoned mansion and Libby's parents. So upon receiving this letter in the mail, Libby's normal and upcoming life is totally upended and takes a 360 and she basically becomes a detective to try and figure out who her birth parents were. So upon receiving this letter in the mail, Libby embarks on this mystery detective work to try and learn more about her parents, but also what was happening in the house. And she comes to learn many secrets along the way because there were some interesting people living in this house along with her birth parents. And that's where we kind of have this entanglement of three different families happening. So this book does shift into three different POVs. We have Libby, it jumps back to like 1987 to the early 90s when she was not born yet, but her parents and her older siblings were still living and we kind of see what's happening behind the scenes and the secrets unfolding and then it'll jump to the forward with Libby's perspective. It all, you know, jumps. So at first it was hard for me to kind of get into the swing of who's POV, but like once you kind of get through that, you pick it up very quickly. So at this point, I would say I'm enjoying the story. It's definitely very suspenseful and we're getting clues along the way and I'm wanting to know what's happening. So it's definitely like a page turner in that sense. I will say that I think I'm just gonna end up liking this book and not loving this book. I can generally tell if I'm gonna love 
a book or like a book, you know, about 20 to 50 pages in. But I expect that with like suspense and like thrillers because I know they're not really character driven, they're more plot driven. So when I need a character driven, like deep read, I refer to other books such as Shadow of Night. So this is just a quick read that's going to help me, you know, get lost in a story and try and get me through my September reading goal. So I think I'll be able to finish this tomorrow. I'll have time to read it tonight. I'm going home after we go to the fall festival this afternoon. So I'm going to try and leave and get home before dark. And then I don't know, I'll have all evening to read theoretically and all day tomorrow because the weekend is not over yet. We're halfway through the weekend. But yeah, with that said, Let's go to the fall festival. Sunday friends! The fall festival yesterday was super fun. I am now at home if you cannot <laughs> tell already but the fall festival was so fun. Also if you hear noise in the background it's George watching football. <laughs> Just an FYI. I got a few things at the fall festival. There was like a library. The local library had a tent set up and they were just selling like used books and some like little jewelry and and accessories and things like that. So I got some little cute Halloween jewelry bits. This cute little cat pin that says trick or treat and some pumpkin earrings because I don't really have any very Halloween specific like seasonal jewelry. So that's fun. And then I got this book that was a dollar. These were also a dollar as well. <laughs> but this is called The Janus Stone by Ellie Griffiths. I had never heard of it before. It's about a forensic archaeologist who gets entangled in a missing child case. And I guess these construction workers are demolishing an old large mansion and find the bones of a child and Ruth is kind of called upon to investigate. And I just love the line where it says, is it a Roman era ritual sacrifice or is the killer closer at hand? So she uses carbon dating and finds out that the bones predate the home and they date back to a time when a private owner was living at the mansion and dun dun dun, dot dot dot. It sounded like a very interesting like mystery read, potentially murder, given that there's bones and we have a forensic archaeologist so that's really fun. I also wanted to share that I got some like autumnal fall garland today again at Aldi where I got my pillows but this I think was like $3.99 or like four to five dollars but it's just cute little felt pumpkins and I think I'll hang this up on the mantle and then last things last book check in. I am on page 250 so I say I have like 90 pages left and again my goal is to finish this this weekend so by the end of the day today before I go to bed so I think that is very doable considering Sunday has been pretty chill and I don't have a lot going on I do want to try and meet up with my friend Jillian we were gonna go on a walk but now it's raining so we might go to like this indoor plant place which I shared in a, vo a vlog from not this past summer but the summer last year summer 2021 and it's just a really cool greenhouse where there's really fun like pathways and it's kind of an experience to go even if you're not plant shopping so I texted her saying like <laughs> what should we do now that it's raining so 
we shall see how that goes and i'm just waiting to finish some laundry pretty chill sunday i'm going to just try and do some reading maybe go on a walk or meet up with my friend and then do some more reading i also need to kind of tidy up the living room because it's just we're just living you know it's it's lived in life but do a nice little sunday tidy up i probably won't because i'm gonna end up just laying on the couch and then watching tv tonight so like what's the point so i'll probably do a tidy tomorrow to be honest with that so let's carry on with some reading and wherever the sunday takes me finished family upstairs at seven o'clock tonight it's now like eight something and i'm about to hop in the shower and then watch house of the dragon at nine o'clock but i wanted to share my thoughts because there were definitely twists <laughs> there were lots of twists my mouth my jaw did drop at one of the big twists toward the end I will give it that. Yeah, I did rate it on Goodreads. I gave it a three out of five stars. I think if you like domestic thrillers, definitely for you. If you like <laughs> strange families, definitely for you. The book felt like I was watching a true crime documentary, which you guys know, I love me some true crime. So also if you're into true crime, but you want like a fictional story, I think this book would be, you would like this. Given any kind of domestic thriller or thriller, there is some um, not so pleasant things in this book, but I don't want to give too many details on that just because I feel like they do tie in to the plot and I don't want to give away any hint of spoilers because it will really ruin your experience if you do watch go into this book. But I will just say there is abuse in this book throughout the book and perhaps that is kind of comes to the territory of domestic thrillers. I guess I don't normally, I don't really like domestic thrillers, but I really enjoy Lisa Jewell's books. It's kind of like any kind of thriller or like Ruth Ware's book where like the book is not riveting. It doesn't change my life, but I'm not expecting it to change my life. I just am showing up expecting something and hoping the author delivers that. So I definitely took what I needed from this book. I read it in less than a week. So I would say it's definitely a quick read if you are looking for something to read in a week or in a few days, or if you're like going on a plane or something on a long flight, car ride, whatever, this will kind of fit that bill. I will say that I'm very excited because there's a sequel to this book. It's a standalone sequel, so it's not directly a series. I don't know, it, do you call that like a series? But it, continues on with the characters and continues the story so i'm actually kind of excited to read that because i don't know i am not against like books that kind of end on a good note i'm not against having another you know book after that whatever the author wants to give i am open to that so i know the book just came out in august and i've been seeing that like at all the bookstores in the new section so i don't know i don't think i'll read it anytime soon like it's definitely not the next book i'm going to be reading <laughs> i will be excited to read that because i do want to know what happens next with kind of where the characters left off because it's not like it ends on a cliffhanger note it'll definitely kind of end and you can be satisfied with the ending but there definitely was some kind of open-ended ness to the ending where you could expand on into it with a second book so yeah thank you for coming along for this weekend autumnal reading vlog i hope you enjoyed the reading and the bookish and the fall bits and i will see you in the next video bye <laughs>